welcome back guys i don't know what to say this news is crazy this just came out some of you have seen it maybe some of you haven't but before we get straight into it i know what you know what the topic is based on the thumbnail but before we get into it i am the drunk capitalist and i'm here to discuss some financial things i don't really know how to react to this quite yet but i want to take a little dive with you guys about everything that's going on Bank of America just launched a zero down payment mortgage in 21 cities that can make it much cheaper and easier to buy a home. But there's a lot of caveats to the situation and I really feel like something's up with this. I just don't like it quite right. It doesn't feel quite right. There's something up. And usually when I say things like this, like certain red flags go off so i feel like y'all should put on y'all glasses maybe two of them maybe your contacts throw your blinders on throw your third eye on and really look at this fine print because something about this does not sit right with me and i'm not saying i'm a homeowner but i was in the process of buying a home at one point before moving out of my family home and i decided to step away because I somehow got into like some type of bidding war when there was no other buyers. In fact, the the people that were trying to sell me the house were the ones changing the price. So before we even get into all that, let's look at this, right? So Bank of America just launched their a zero down payment mortgage. Now zero down payment on a loan is a red flag. <laughs> red flag. <laughs> Why? Because as we know from loans, the lower your actual equity is, the the lower equity position you begin in. And if you have a low equity position, it's more likely that you're gonna default. Why? That is just the statistics of loans, especially um, in most cases. And the thing about it is that th this has never really happened before where people were allowed to have a zero down payment mortgage. Most mortgages are the like most expensive product anybody purchases in the whole United States. So it's very interesting that a bank who makes the money off of interest and usually loans and servicing loans is like, mm, mm, I don't know, you don't gotta give us no money. So you gotta think like, what is it that's gonna make them money in the long run for a product like this where they're basically making it easier for you to access a loan. It's giving 2008. It's giving huge ass depression. <laughs> like that's what it's giving. Um you know, here's some quick points that insider points out. Putting down a down payment on a home can be a huge hurdle for some buyers. Yes. And the reason why that's a huge hurdle for some buyers is because they can't afford it. So the problem <sighs> I got to relax. <laughs> Because this is going, this is going is giving me heart palpitations. Okay, just thinking of how bad this can be. Okay, let's think logically here. If someone has a hard time creating a down payment for a home, it's usually not because they can afford a home. It's because they can't afford a home. Now I know people commonly say, "Hey, why don't you add my rental payments?" And you, I demonstrate that I pay my rent. A rent is not a loan. That's why rent payments have never been really as considered as your credit score where it shows your loans. Like, because think about it. If someone is renting an apartment for $2,000 and it's making it very difficult for them to save up money to now buy a home, that means that either they have a spending problem, which can exacerbate itself in a matter of time or they have a saving problem which will exacerbate itself in a matter of time why do you ask because think about it you have a two thousand dollar apartment right versus a two thousand dollar mortgage here is the difference your apartment when the toilet breaks you call your landlord your landlord fixes it when the roof needs fixing you call the landlord the landlord fixes it. When something else happens and you're the, the homeowner, if you have a mortgage, you got to fix it. But you just demonstrate that you can't even save money in the first place. 
So what would make someone think that you are not gonna you're gonna be able to handle it and if something extreme were to happen in your life? That's the whole point of having some equity. That's the whole point of having good credit. That's that's just the whole point. <laughs> and now they're just here saying, Oh, don't worry about it. Don't you worry about that. Go ahead and buy your little home in the hottest home market ever. But let's keep going. Bank of America aims to help by launching a mortgage that doesn't require upfront payment. Yep. Just like the cars. Just like the cars that don't require upfront payment. Does not end well. You can just imagine the interest rates. This hurts. <laughs> I don't think you know. It hurts. It hurts. <sighs> it doesn't require a minimum credit score, but considers factors like rent and insurance payments. Okay. Like your car insurance payments and your rent. I do think that, you know, uh, rent payments should be considered towards the underwriting of a loan. Just to give you that extra check. If, it, if anything... I believe that if you have like a significant amount of uh, on-time rental payments, that should at least do something to lower the APR on the loan, if nothing else. Um, but I don't really think that just rent payments alone are gonna do anything because also you can fake that. Come on, you can fake pay stuff. People do it all the time. Um, imagine getting approved for a mortgage on your dream home without having to make a down payment, pay closing costs, or have a minimum credit score yeah well I've never imagined that because it just doesn't seem like you know regular things but I guess we're moving into a, a different society these days um things are changing um I wish I knew all the 21 cities um uh, but the community affordable loan solutions what they call it will be available in, in appointed markets including historically black and hispanic neighborhoods so they're targeting black and Hispanic neighborhoods, right? But well, we're gonna get into that. Neighborhoods located in Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, Detroit, Los Angeles, and Miami, very black places. Like those are the places where black people live or people of color, should I say. Um, the plan requires no mortgage insurance or minimum credit and instead uses credit guidelines based on these factors. We just talked about it. Phone, utility, insurance payments, to qualify buyers must complete a home buyer certification course prior to application. Now that I support. I believe every home buyer, no matter what, even if you're getting a conventional loan, you should get into a home buyer certification course. I did the same thing when I was on my way into uh, getting one. Home ownership strengthens our communities and can help individuals, families to build wealth over time the head of neighborhood and community lending for Bank of America said in a statement, our community affordable loan solution will help make the dream of sustained home ownership attainable for more black and Hispanic families. I think it's interesting that AJ, who is a she by the way, AJ uh, Barkley, I think it's interesting that she used the word, the dream of sustained home ownership. Cause that is the dream to actually sustain home ownership, right? Um, but how do we plan to make sure that the people that are buying these homes actually can sustain the mortgage and the mortgage payments and the home itself? Because a lot of home ownership is also, you know, taking care of the home, fixing things, upgrading things when they need upgrading. And then also re when things do increase in value, understanding that once your property increases in value, so would your property tax. Now you qualify for the loan at $2,000, but now your home is worth way more than it was before. So now your property tax has increased. So now your full mortgage payment is higher because the tax, the property tax is rolled into your mortgage, month, your monthly payment. So it's not necessarily just the mortgage with the loan amount, but also things like your property tax and your insurance your um actual home insurance <laughs> but we got insurances that we gonna talk about as well 
Because they're definitely walling on this. I just don't understand. And it's freaking scary. Um, they talk about home ownership rates and equal credit opportunity acts and stuff like that. Trust me, I want black Americans to also own homes. I'm a black American. I want a home. I want my whole family to have homes. I want everybody that wants a home to have a home. Point blank. Everybody I believe in America should have some form of home ownership. How you get there makes a huge difference though because just because you get to the home ownership part and you take your little photo on instagram with your new keys and the big uh, cardboard key that's cute and all but what happens in two years when you can't afford it no more um you don't post about that now do you but we see that foreclosures increase don't we yeah okay let's keep moving because i'm gonna i'm getting stressed out so they're ma- eliminating three major roadblocks to home ownership. They're basically changing the rules, on quote unquote, for minorities, which really isn't the case. Cause like they said specifically, they didn't say for black and Hispanic people or black and Latino people or minority people. No, they said for your neighborhood. Pay attention. As inflation and interest rates height increase the cost of home ownership, housing affordability in the U.S. has fallen to a 33-year low. Ain't it funny that the moment that they decide to come up with this is when housing is at its highest, interest rates are going up towards their highest? Well, but whatever. I'm going to be the Debbie Downer, I guess. Maybe I don't like nice things. Maybe that's what it is. As a gap in as the gap in home ownership rates for Black and White Americans has widened, it's important to understand the unique challenges that minority home buyers face. Housing affordability and low inventory has made it even more challenging for all buyers to enter into home ownership, even but even more so for Black Americans. See, they keep pointing at us. See, this is for you, and then we're gonna run to it like, yeah, we just got 20k for our student loans. And now we're getting free houses. Yo, it's about to be it's about to be bad. <laughs> it's about to be bad, bro. It's about to be bad. A huge hurdle <laughs> A huge hurdle for home insurance for black Americans is the lack of credit because it prevents them from obtain obtaining loan financing. Now I agree. But here's the thing with credit. Credit just demonstrates your worthiness of like your trustworthiness. Not your worthiness of getting something, but your trustworthiness. How can we trust you? Can we trust you with this money if we give it to you? You said you was going to pay back in 12 months. Have you done that? Does that make sense? Um, and yes, I know there's been historical things where um, black people were prevented from getting homes to begin with, with redlining and stuff. And that's what has led us to being super behind. And there's also been things like predatory lending where we were allowed to own things, but then we're at you know variable interest rate loans on a home scary and then just high high interest rates on on vehicles and stuff like that so just scary scary stuff like always happening but again some of this predatory stuff has there's two parts to it because in every deal every loan situation there's the lender and the borrower now the lender, it's the responsibility of the lender to make sure that whoever they're lending their money to, that they can at least capture some of that money back so they can make money on it. Now it's the borrower's responsibility to make sure that the the deal, the money that they're uh, being lent under the terms that they're being lent this money makes sense for them, right? And that that's where the financial literacy comes in. That's where it, it comes in where you go like, hey, I want a credit card because I want to buy things. But you you had to take the next step and be like, oh, let me find out about interest rates. What does that mean? What does a 26% interest rate really mean? Does it matter? Yes, it does. <laughs> and you got to do that dance. So we can't just automatically straight across the board just say, hey, it's all the lenders. Well, they're all predatory. They are if the the borrower is demonstrating a lack of knowledge because in because the lack of knowledge shows you right there that maybe they're not the best person to lend to but they want it and i'm gonna give it to them but i'm gonna have to cover myself as well so that's how i see the balance between 
uh, black people and when it comes to lending and loans. Um, of course, there have also been, um, there's been so many things a part of this huge struggle pie that it's almost impossible to like really bring it down to this one thing or, or the other, like just racism or just uh, financial illiteracy or, or just education or just not being in the right place at the right time. Like there's so many factors that it's not, it's pointless to even talk about it other than on its actual like level, if that makes sense. Um, that was long winded. <laughs> Um, because lenders use credit scores to help figure out how likely a borrower will be to will be to repay what they owe. Those with lower credit scores generally have a hard time getting approved for a mortgage because you just you don't have the proof, and mortgage is a big thing. Um, black Americans unfortunately tend to have lower credit scores than members of other racial groups do, which means they often have a hard time getting approved for a mortgage. True, and sometimes when they do get approved for the mortgage, the interest rates are higher because the lenders are trying to capture that money as quickly as possible. Usually, loans are front-loaded with interest. Um, I could explain that in another video. I'll make a video all about interest rates, and that's where I'll explain it. Just can I do not have the time to explain it today. I'm too stressed out already. <laughs> um... And the reason I'm stressed out is because, like, for me, this feels like impending, impending doom <laughs> for my community. Um, and I take it, I take it, I take it very seriously. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't want to see us run into things head first and hit a wall. I'm, t I'm tired of seeing us hit walls. I'm tired of seeing us last. I'm tired of seeing us falling. I'm, t I'm just tired. So I'm trying to find a way to, you know balance it off all right so let's go to this video Bank of America is launching a new program to address racial disparities in home ownership. Yeah, this is interesting. The mm -hmm. trial program offers zero down payment and zero closing cost mortgages for first time home buyers. Instead of looking at a credit score though, the bank will take into account whether you've paid your rent or utility bills on time. This launches first in predominantly black and Hispanic Latino communities in Charlotte, Dallas, Detroit, LA and Miami. June Zhu joins us now. She's a clinical assistant professor of finance. At I think that is crazy that like, it's in like some of the most expensive cities. Like it tends, like the cities that we tend to be in, like predominantly in like really gathering, just be so expensive. I think that's crazy. Indiana University Bloomington and a non-resident fellow of housing finance policy at the Urban Institute. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us, June. Uh, tell us more about this program and how effective you think it will be at bridging the racial wealth gap. Remember that's also caused by just straight up racism. And if you think a program like mm -hmm. this may be replicated on a national scale. Well, I think that the first thing is that, you know, we know that home ownership is very important and is one of the best ways for American family to um, accumulate wealth. Because as the borrower pay down their mortgage, they can earn wealth through so-called home equity. Now, if we take a look at networks of US homeowners, 47% of the net worth actually coming from home equity. Mm. And for the minorities, actually the percentage is much higher. Um, let me give you an example. For the black homeowner. Well, see, she, she just said something here. Big important, let's not skip it over. She literally just said, hey, we realize that uh, people with homes uh, tend to have, you know, their net worths and they're coming from equity, but we see that for black uh, people, the home equity makes up a larger portion of their net worth. Now that's important because the difference, which is which is why I have such a problem with the way in which uh, the news does things and why I just don't like them in general, because it's very disingenuous when you last, just last week, we were talking about student loan forgiveness and giving people $20,000. But what we didn't want to talk about is the fact that a lot of those people who are not people of color, that yes, they may qualify for that 
loan based on the parameters but what we lack what we fail to also consider is their family wealth right because it's a difference when you give somebody that's twenty thousand dollars that makes you know a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year or less say they make 50 but in 20 years they're going to inherit their grandmother's house that is in queens and it, and it costs 1.2 million dollars that's a complete different story see y'all not talking about everything they stand to inherit in a few years y'all are just talking about what they what their their bank account looks like right now they just graduated a year ago tired <laughs> I'm tired so like they they're aware they're very aware of the actual um problem and they're aware of where people stand especially people not people of no color where those people stand and they understand that they have a lot of wealth in equity but they have a lot of wealth other where other places that are even more liquid because the thing about real estate is real estate is not a very liquid um wealth right yeah, you can have equity of property, but it's not very liquid. You can't sell a house in a day, usually. You just can't. That is not a real thing. Some people, it takes them two years to sell a house. So if you are in trouble financially and you need to get out of your house and go to something cheaper, it'll 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 be it'll be very difficult for you to do it in a timely manner where it won't affect you long term, like where, where you won't have to foreclose if something goes wrong. It's just going to go downhill. And that's the thing. They're actually telling you right now, white people, let's just call them white people, have equity, but they also have other forms of wealth. So they could use that other forms of wealth to get them out of trouble. And, and alternatively, they will die with that wealth and pass it to someone else. And that person will have the same thing. Now, for most African Americans, people get, sometimes people get houses, but they don't actually own them for that long and they don't ever pass anything down and that's if they had something to begin with about 60 percent of the total net worth is actually from home equity so i think it's very important if we can bring more households into home buying market now for this program will this program bring more minorities in my opinion the answer is yes i think it's for two reasons the first thing is that because uh, compared to the white households, people of color sometimes do not have sufficient liquid resources right. to compete for a home, right? Um, and the other thing is that usually... She's talking about the fact that you don't even have the proper resources to compete in this housing market right now. You don't even have the extra cash to compete in the housing market, but they're trying to give you the house anyway. And okay. But to me, I, I hate to be that person. They just trying to give you everything except reparations. Everything so that you could be like, oh, all right, well, they tried. I guess I messed up. No, they need to give you reparations. I know I, I probably don't want to hear it. I know some viewers are like, eh, reparations, ew, why are you talking about that? It's like, this this is the problem. Why you create, you have to create programs like this when you avoid just giving people reparations. Because here's the thing. If you gave people reparations and you gave people actual resources, right? And you stop, you know, giving them the fish, you let them learn how to fish. You, they are now 100% their own responsibility. Black people, black America will be 100% our own responsibility. You don't have to sit around and make super obscure, fine line, fine print programs dedicated to them and their neighborhoods when you just give them reparations. You could have just been done with the situation, done with the argument, and that's why I don't believe any of this stuff. And that's why I'm looking so closely because it's like, mm, every time y'all try to give us something, why does it always end up bad? Like, it ends up worse than it was to start with. Like, come on, come on, 2008, man, come on. In my households, they have lower income than the white households, and they have fewer savings. So if you have a program with no down payment, no closing costs, it can help minority families to fill the gap between available savings and also upfront cash needed for a down payment and closing costs at a, um, you know, on the home. You know, a second thing okay. I think, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, finish, finish. 
Sure. So second thing I think is also very important is, is there is a program using different credit worthiness, such as rental pay, pay history. I think this can reduce the barrier to achieve the home ownership. Because currently what we have is credit score is the gateway to the credit market. We're not even gonna have to get it. We don't have to get into the fact that even once you pay off your mortgage, finally you don't really own your house because you still gotta pay property tax, whatever. But the fact that you're just gonna skip over the part where of equity, right? The the reason you have twenty percent worth of equity in the down payment of the home in the purchase price is because that means you have equity in the home. But if you don't put anything down at all. You're already starting. I, I started saying this from earlier. You're already starting at zero. And if you're starting at zero and there's interest and there's higher interest because you're starting at zero, you do you understand how long it will take for you to start building equity? They're going to make me lose it, okay? I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Um, but my research also show that in additional to credit score, if you have the rental payment, utility bill payment, they can also be used to demonstrate the borrower's credit worthiness. So if we have alternative measures of the credit worthiness, it can open the credit box and bring in more homeowners into the housing market. You know, it's like they're saying, oh, we're going to adopt better underwriting policies. But while we do that, we're going to... Uh, adopt worse lending policies so mm, i feel like that's an even trade-off you know better underwriting worse lending practices what like it's just it's just ridiculous that's not discussed a lot of times a lot of first-time home buyers especially young people mm -hmm. are making that down payment with some portion of family wealth right their that's parents right. are helping them out and so that's another that's aspect right. to all of this how many you know uh, families of color have that compounded family wealth to help their kids in that first purchase um, but I do want to ask you about the zero down payment mortgage piece of this because mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. help but get flashbacks to the 2008 housing crisis, right? Yeah. And so yes. what are the risks that come with offering some of these types of loans? Well, I really like that question. Well, you know, all seems equal. If you have a loan down payment loans, this loan would perform worse. But, you know, this is to say that if all the loans characteristics are what? very similar, then if you have a higher LTV loan, then this default at a higher risk. However, I want to emphasize there are so many different factors influence the fall risk. And in this example, we can see that borrow down payment, it's not the only indicator of the default risk. We also have, for example, credit scores or, you know, something to measure the credit worthiness. You, you're literally saying, hey, it's not just that that makes it bad. There's all these other things that also make it bad, but we're also going to ignore all those other things. This is good. <laughs> like, wait, what? And my problem, oh, uh, uh, my problem is that there, I'm not saying that black people shouldn't go for this. There's a certain um, group of black people that I believe will highly benefit this, benefit from this. And there's a group of black people that may bite off more than they can chew. That they're not quite ready for a house yet, but they're gonna go for this because it's an opportunity. They don't want to miss it. It's they're gonna have FOMO about it. And it's like, there, there's so much wrong with it. And, and one, it's, even though they didn't say specifically it's for black people and they can't do that and they're not going to do that. And white people or, you know, people that now are of color are going to also benefit from this in a lot of ways. It's like, it's, it's kind of racist. <laughs> like it is and i usually don't call things out as racist i like i don't even i don't really do that but for this it's kind of giving me racism but i'm supposed to be happy about it that's the thing it's like they're trying to sell it as this is good we're doing you a favor because you're black and we know you ain't got no money and we know your family ain't got no money to give you to help you buy something so we're gonna do you this favor and we're gonna give you this money 
at a high interest rate, we're going to make sure the LTV doesn't exceed, you know. Um, good luck with that, though. Um, a lot of you aren't going to actually qualify and get this. But we do know some people that will, and they're coming to take your stuff. They're coming to your neighborhood because that's where the incentive is. As factors. So we should take a look at uh, different that. characteristics for, for the down, not just for the down payment. Mm -hmm. So I think in my mind, if, if this program, you know, um, no down payment, no closing costs, but execute it very carefully and we can monitor the risk. I think the program can make a step forward in opening the credit box, especially for the minorities. Let's hope, right? Yeah, and All it's right. so, home ownership is so key. It transforms the way you relate to your community, the way, the way you totally. relate to politics, um, and you're yeah. steeped in studying this type of thing. Really fascinating. Thanks for joining us. It really is. Walking us through Thank it. you. Thanks, June. Yep. So I want to get into the different uh, spe specificities of the program. I know I've been going for a really long time, but the Community Affordable Loan Solution Mortgage requires zero down payment, zero closing costs. Buyers welcome to make a down payment to lower the loan amount, but one is not required. So they're letting you do a down payment. So it is in your best interest to allow them to let you do the down payment, put the down payment down and actually get some equity in this home before you buy it. That's what I'm saying. Some people will greatly benefit from this because they have the down payment, right? All customary borrow, borrower non-recurring closing costs are waived. That's what I mean by they're going to benefit from this because if those things are waived, a lot of times closing costs is like 4% of the price of the home. So if you can just get rid of that, we lit, right? A lot of people are going to benefit from that. The people that can. Mortgage insurance is not required. <sighs> Huge issue. <laughs> Huge issue. Um, So you probably don't never heard of mortgage insurance. You probably have home, heard of home insurance. But a lot of people haven't heard of mortgage insurance or uh, PMI. It's literally insurance that insures the mortgage. But it doesn't really protect you. It actually protects your uh, lender. Um, but it's always been a huge factor, in, especially in home purchases that are under 20% uh, in equity on, on, at initial purchase. So it protects, because those are the ones that usually default. There you go. It just turns out that when people borrow for homes and you don't put at least 20% down, they tend to default and lose their home. But, you know, whatever. We're not going to talk about that. Zero percent. Don't you worry about that. Like, that's literally what's going on right now. They're like, mm, don't even worry about that private mortgage insurance. You don't got to worry about that. And if you're, if they have the enough consideration to say, hey, we understand that private mortgage insurance adds to your payment and we don't want to have any barriers to you getting into this home because, so if you're telling me private mortgage insurance, most people pay probably like between like 50 to $200. You can't pay 50 to $200 a month for the insurance, but they're going to let you have the house. If that's what's holding you back, then th come on, man. You can't afford the house. <laughs> like, home buyer education course completion is required prior to application. I said it before, that is perfectly fine. We need even more education if you can. There should be like continued home buyer education. You must not have owned a home in the last three years to qualify. Meaning, it's first time buyer, but not really. Because you could have owned a home before and just not own a home now. Meaning you could have, it says three years. That's a very interesting timeline. <laughs> three years. Has it been exactly three years since this whole big thing where people were getting sick and dying? I feel like it's been exactly three years since then. Something about that. I don't know. Gotta look more into it. Okay, so now we got the disclosures. Maximum income and loan amount limits apply. So there's a limit to how much income you can make. 
Income cannot exceed 150% of the area median income limits. Usually that's not really an issue. 150% is like, depending on where you at, that is pretty normal for people that are gentrifying. So they can they can swing it. Like they'll they'll find a way to make it go in. Um the regardless of census check income designation, fixed rate mortgages, no refinances, primary residences only. Which I appreciate that they're like, hey, this is you, you gotta live in the house. <laughs> like this is not a um investment opportunity. But you can obviously purchase like a multifamily unit. I'm I'm sure of it. Uh yeah, you can yeah, it says it right there. You only properties in eligible markets qualify. Loan to value hundred percent. Max combined L T V is one oh six and two to four units. Ninety five one oh six and max L T V equals the lesser of the purchase price. Um L T V is just loan to value. Um basically what your loan is versus what you, the house is valued at or aka value as an appraised like official value like an appraisal is an official value of your home um and the loan is what you're actually taking out and they don't want your loan to be if your loan is more than your appraised value then that is what increases your LTV and what makes your LTV go past 100, essentially. So if you're if your if your loan if your house is a hundred thousand appraisal and the loan is a hundred thousand, that is 100 percent, right? But if your home is appraised at a hundred thousand, but then you're in a bidding war and the house is now a hundred and twenty thousand dollars, you gotta pay that. Now you got a bit of a problem. You have to like fix that gap. In between I forgot what they call it but it's some type of gap that you have to basically cover but I guess if they're essentially saying you don't have no money anyway they're not in the business of having you fill that gap um, because they're not gonna loan you no extra money <laughs> they said this is what you get you're not ex you're not exceeding a hundred and six percent so the most you can bargain for is six thousand dollars Per hundred thousand dollars is essentially what they're saying or the appraised value minus the down payment amount any secondary financing must be from an approved community second program so there are community programs that already help with your down payment so if you can combine those two things that's that's the best way you could win because for example in New York there are community programs that will give you 40 thousand dollars toward a home purchase as long as the home is livable upon purchase like you can't buy a fixer-upper essentially um you have to have a ready to live in house i think fha is the same thing you need to have a house that's livable when you buy it they're, they're not in the business of giving you money to fix fix and screw and do all the types of piping they're not into that um if you can get that plus this and have your some money in there you you can you can do damage on them you could you could really do that but either, are they gonna let you get away with it i don't know but i think that's probably the only way this can work is if you're being extremely extremely savvy but if you're just walking into there with two pennies to rub together and that's it you're 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 gonna play yourself like you're gonna play yourself and that's that's if they still let you do it which they might Cause they gotta make it look like you know I'm doing something, but if all you got is two pennies and you walk in here, you're gonna play yourself in a couple years. Cause things will go bad. Things will go bad. The down payment funds provided in the Community Affordable Loan Solution Program, ten thousand and fifteen thousand, um, may be considered taxable income. So they can tax you on the down payment that you're getting. And it's gonna to go towards your income. For some people, adding ten to fifteen thousand will put you in a different tax bracket. For some people it won't. But all I got to say, guys, is that when we look at certain opportunities, we really have to shell them out and then look for alternatives and see where we can combine things, where things look fishy, and just really, really, really reading the you know the fine print because not everything that glitters is gold 
Not everything that glitters is gold. It's like, there's so much to all these things that we're doing, especially in, in these later stages. Once I start seeing opportunities for people that didn't have opportunities when things were booming, lets me know that we're near the end of, and we're getting ready to bust. That's what it makes me feel like. And I don't know if it's just trauma from 2008, 2009, uh, you know, the Great Recession, which was a depression. <laughs> like, that's what it was. Um, it just, it just doesn't really sit right with me, especially in a place where we only hear opportunities for people of color when something is going, when things are bad. That's when they want to give you opportunities. It's never when things are good. They're not even looking at you when things are good. They're like, ah, it's so good. And then it gets, it's so good for so long. They're like, oh, oh, damn. Ain't no black people around? Oh, ain't no, ain't no Hispanics around? Oh, we we done forgot about them. Ah, oh. quick, quick, diversity and inclusion officer. Throw a party, pizza, <laughs> on us, yay, we inclusive. <laughs> like, oh god, bye y'all. I I'm done. I can't do this no more. This is crazy. This is crazy. I hope y'all also watch my second video on my reaction to the whole student loan thing as I had time to actually sit down and take y'all in the information and come up with my ideas and from the lack of information and lack of transparency at, at some of these points. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Peace.